Hello. Good evening, Ling. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Good. How was your weekend? Uh, my weekend? Uh, you know, um, I spent most of my weekend to attend two weddings. Two weddings? Yes. Two so after, yes, after wow. after two wedding, I was really exhausted. <laughs> yeah, I must have been exhausted. Yeah, uh, were they on two different days? Um, or the same day? Um, actually, it's it occurred in the same day, oh but uh, but on the Saturday, on the Saturday, I had to go. To I had to go to the supermarket to buy some mm -hmm. gift for them. So I think uh, this occurred actually two days for me. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. Of, that's, you must have had a very busy weekend. Uh -huh. So who got married? Were it friends or family? Mm, yes. Um, what a wedding was my university friends. Mm -hmm. Both were from your university? Mm, yes. Ah. Wow. <clears throat> so too young, right? Yeah. No. So these two these two friends were they were those two friends? Like did they want to go to each other's weddings? Like <laughs> I don't understand. You think that they that they were they also friends? Like, or were they just both your friends? That's a lot of wedding. Hmm. Oh, that's that's fun. Uh, were they nice? Nice wedding. Mm, of course. Mm, uh, nice for them, but not nice for me. Oh, why not? Because you know, <laughs> uh, I got cough. I got cough before. You still have a cough. Yes, and actually. Uh, before the before this uh, big wedding, I nearly recovered. My my cough near was nearly recovered. However, mm -hmm. um, during my this kind of wedding, I bring some ice, ice water. So my cough, my cough, I got cough again. Oh no! Oh no! I'm sorry. That's too bad. Well, I, I hope you feel better soon. Mm, yes, thank you. I, I think a Vietnamese wedding must be very beautiful, though. Mm, yes. Mm. That'd be interesting. Uh, welcome, Rafa. Hello, Federic. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you again. Mm, nice to see you. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. I am still. I am on holidays because today is the last day of um, Christmas holidays oh, okay. in my country. Um, tomorrow I'll go to. I'll begin to to work, but mm -hmm. still I have some relaxed time. Chilly, um, chilly. I'm chilling out, enjoying with Colingo. Um, also seeing right now I was seeing a movie with my wife at the TV on English in English uh, about the Toscana pretty nice and I am enjoying I am enjoying pretty good yeah. thank you yeah, nice to have a relaxing holiday what movie what was the movie about um, one week on, uh, at the Toscana is uh, about one woman who got divorced and went with a gay group to the Toscana, um, met some people, um, yeah, entertainment. Oh, okay, great. It's from United States, it's an American film, but uh, not very famous. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't think, Toscana? I don't know Toscana. 
Turn on that. Uh, okay, good. Well, that's nice. Lots of free time. Unwind. And chill out. Uh, how was your weekend? Relaxing? Or... Did you have a good weekend, Rafael? Could you repeat because I couldn't hear you properly? I don't know if my song. Did you have a good, good weekend? Yes, I, I had, I had, in past, no. Had. I had, I had, I had having a good weekend. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Me too. Mm. Nice. Did you uh, go into to the chart to song to sing? Because I, mm -hmm. if I could remember it properly, sometimes you go to the chart and mm -hmm. sing there. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I did play. I played music at my church actually. Yeah, I did. I played. Yeah. I actually played the drums to this weekend. The uh, drums. The drums. Yeah, we sometimes we have rock and roll style music, and we, so we were playing rock and roll type music today oh, or gosh. yesterday. I was playing the drums mm -hmm. mostly, singing nice. a little bit. One of my dreams when I was younger was to play drums at my church, mm -hmm. and I couldn't do it <laughs> never because <laughs> the the battery. I don't know the drums were from a, fr uh, a friend of mine that never shared his um, drums with another guy, and I couldn't oh. afford. To, <laughs> I couldn't afford uh, buying a, a drums, but I still I hope. I could do it <laughs> yeah, <we laughs> at any <can>. time. <laughs> They're fun. They're fun to play. <clears throat> it's, mm. it's hard to learn because it takes a lot of coordination. You're doing this with this mm. hand and this with this mm. hand, something mm. with your left foot, right foot, and all mm. these It takes a lot of practice, mm. but it's very fun. Do you play a lot of these instruments, if I may? Mm, I play a few. I've, Three main instruments, just guitar and piano and drums, mainly. Nice. So um, we have an advanced food class today. We have to talk about food. I love talking about food. I just finished a little leftover ramen, which is uh, uh, one of my favorite dishes. It's a Japanese noodle soup. But today we're going to talk about Greek food, um, which is... Uh, very popular in the United States. You can find Greek food everywhere here. It's one of the most popular uh, ethnic foods. Uh, so we'll talk about some of the history of Greek food, where it got its influence, um, and some of the popular dishes and things like that that we'll discuss. We'll also talk about imperative for grammar. So uh, um, do you have you guys studied imperative before? Imperative, like grammar. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe yes, maybe no. Mm -hmm. For instance, imperative. Uh, an imperative sentence could be uh, "sit down." That's imperative. Yeah. Um. But uh, imperative um, doesn't have to be so harsh. Imperative can be also very nice, depending on it. It just means that there's no... You don't usually use uh, subject in imperative, so... Uh, um, and it's usually quite short. Mm, can you think of... Can you try thinking of maybe what some imperative statements you can make uh, around dinner time? Let's go to dinner. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Let's go to dinner out. Let's go to dinner. Let's go to dinner. Let's go. Yeah, because let's go. Uh, yeah, let's go. We can. Let's go. Let's get out of here. That might be imperative. Mm -hmm. And Lynn. Um. I often tell I often I often tell my my nephew that it's your dish. It's what? It your dish. I still don't understand. It's eat your dish. Eat your eat your dish. 
Is that what she said? Yeah, eat your, oh, okay, okay. Eat your meal. Eat your meal. A dish is a meal, but I would think, I would say eat your meal, because that's the food. Because a dish is also like the plate. Or you could say finish, finish your meal. Maybe because they started eating a little bit and they didn't finish it. And like, finish your meal. That would definitely be imperative. Uh, so what is the difference between milk and this? Uh, meal is a food. A dish means more than one thing. Dish is like a, um, a, like you can order a dish at a restaurant. The dish might be a, a dish of fish and rice and vegetables or something. Um, that can also be a meal. It's the same thing. But dish uh, is also like the, um, the like plate that you put on, the actual plate. That is also called a dish. So for some reason, we can order a dish at a restaurant, but we don't say eat your dish in the United States for some reason. Um, to me, that sounds like you're taking the plate and you're eating the plate or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It sounds different to me. I don't know why we don't. Okay, got it. Yeah. So... I got it. It does mean meal, but in that sentence, I'd say eat your meal or finish your meal. Good. So, yes, those are good imperative uh, sentences. A good warm-up. Uh, I want to just kind of talk a little bit more about imperative. Uh, so, um, a couple rules about imperative. Um, it's kind of, it can be like giving orders, like Lin's sentence, giving orders, you know, uh, get out of here, <laughs> eat your dish, no, please stay, please stay. Uh, and um, the other thing is it's uh, always formed in the second person, always in the second person. So, for instance, if you say after dinner, you could say, uh, you could say, wash the dishes. And really, it's kind of like saying, you you wash the dishes, you please wash the dishes. So it's always going to be in the second person. And it could be so you or everyone, it could be all of you, it could be plural. Um, uh, and there's four, four common ways we use imperatives. Uh, can we think? Can anyone think of any of the four ways that we use imperatives? Any any guesses as to what one might be? What's well, so we actually somebody already kind of mentioned it. Kind of talked about it a little bit already. So one is like what we said before, giving orders, to give direct orders, right? So uh, close the door. It's a give direct order. Next, we have simple instructions. So this could be something you, maybe you'd see on a sign uh, on the street, for instance. Stop. <laughs> simple instructions. Or push. Maybe you see that on a door. Push the door. So these are simple instructions. Uh, Cut here. Maybe there's a piece of paper with a dotted line that says cut here. Just instructions. Um, and this one is a little nicer. We can use this uh, about, about, we can relate this to food. Inviting people to do something. So. Uh, come on in and make yourself at home. That's something that we say a lot. It's not. Um, it's actually imperative. Come on in. Come in. Uh, make yourself at home. It means 
be comfortable, relax. Mikasa sukasa, you know. Same thing. We do this. We have the same thing in our our culture. And another friendly one <coughs> is. Uh, Friendly advice. Okay. Let's say your 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 best friend is feeling sick. What can you tell what can you tell him or her? What's something you might say to your best friend if they're sick? Uh Rafael? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, what's something that you yeah. might say to your best friend if they're sick? If my if my best friend gets sick, I must go to visit him using uh, imperative. Uh, mm -hmm. Go to go to visit. Would be go to visit. Well, I mean, if you talk to if you were talking to him and he was sick, what mm. would you say to him? Uh, recover, recover as soon <laughs> as as you as you can. Yeah. Recover. Uh, the way we say that here, there's a we use a phrasal verb. It's more much more common. We say, uh, get well soon. Ah, uh, yeah. Which means recover. It means the same thing. It means recover as soon as you can. We just say well. it's a common greeting. Mm -hmm. Greeting for someone. Gotcha. Get well soon. So that's a good. Mm. Yeah, you can write that down. That's a, that's our greeting for someone. Yeah. Please mm. get well soon. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Ling, what about you? What if your best friend was sick? Maybe, maybe she has a cough like you, <laughs> or he has a cough. What would you? What could you say? No. Uh, take a nap. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Take a nap. Get some. Get some rest. You need more sleep. When your body heals, drink some tea. Yeah. These are all imperatives too. Uh. Okay. So. That's just some stuff about imperatives. We can also make imperatives negative, right? So how can you, who can tell me, who can give me a negative imperative sentence? Don't go to visit them. Okay. Don't go to visit them. That would be that would be negative imperative, right? Don't go over there. Uh, do not enter. You see, and that's like a sign you mm. see on the, you see this all over the world in every language. Do not enter. You know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Exactly. So just like just like everything else in English, negate, you add not. Okay, good. That's imperative. Any uh, questions about imperative? No questions. No question. Good. Great. Then we can talk about food. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite subjects. Um, so uh, we get to try some Greek food today. Uh, we're going to talk about the history, the culture of Greek food. It's got a very long history, and uh, we get to hear, just kind of learn about some of the basics, some of the normal kind of ingredients they use, and learn some of the popular dishes. So let's take a look at our article. Oh, I just pressed a button. I don't know what happened. Ah, sorry. Pressed the wrong button. Okay. Went to another language website. Okay, so an introduction to Greek food and Greek cooking. Now, since this is an advanced class, I'm going to give you guys some speaking practice and have you uh, read the article. I'll read this. Uh, I'll read the introduction, and then I'll have you guys read. So, Greek cooking offers an incredibly rich and diverse array of foods and beverages that are the culmination of literally thousands of years of living, cooking, and eating. 
While each Greek meal is fresh and inviting, it is also a trip back to Greece's history. Uh, actually, are there any questions about the introduction? Because there's kind of some big words. Array, it's um, different. If, or I don't know the meaning of array. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, that's exactly. So an array is like uh, it's like a variety, many different things, like little many different, different, yeah, a diverse array, like many choices on the menu. Mm -hmm. an array. And if you look at a Greek menu, there are many choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, combination is like uh, a combination of uh, mm -hmm. like you're adding all all these years together, thousands of years, and it's all mm -hmm. it's all piling up. Many, many different things, putting, putting them all together. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ling, will you read us about, read to us about ingredients? I had to read the whole section of ingredients, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, why don't you read? Uh, yes. The, name, the names of food cooking methods and basic ingredient, ingredients have changed little over time. Bread, olive, olive, olive. Olives, olives and olive oil. Olive. Mm, How could I pronounce this word? Yeah. Olives, olive, and olive oil. Olive oil. Yeah, actually, and uh, why? Olive actually kind of sounds like this. Uh, olive and olive it has the same sound in English. Olive, olive. <laughs> it almost the same. Those two words. Those two. And why constitute constitute uh, the the chip, the chip. Triptych. I don't know. Triptych. Um, triptych of the Greek diet for many centuries, just as they do today. Greece is a nation of small farmers who produce an incredible array of mainly ar mainly artisan ar uh, no. Mainly organically produced cheese, oils, fruits, nuts, grains, rhizomes, and vegetables supplemented, no, supplemented by an array of greens and herbs that grow in the wild. Uh, there are the fruits that form the base of traditional Greek uh, rhizomes. Rhizomen. Regimen, yeah. Regimen to which they add both variety and nutrition. Greece climate is perfect growing for oil, 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 um, uh, Let's see, where are we? Herbs? Oh, let's see. Olive, uh, olive and lemon tree. For uh, uh, mm, uh, how can I pronounce this word? It's like what I do. You see what I typed in the uh, in the chat box? What does it say after all of it? Says all of. It's that's how olive. we say olive. That's how that's how we say it. Olive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Growing for olive and lemon trees, producing two of the most important elements. Greek, Greek cooking, spicy garlic, and other herbs such as uh, um, uh, 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 such as uh, spices, garlic, such as orange.
Oregano. Oregano. Mm-hmm, yep. What is the next word? The next word is yes. basil. Basil. Night. And what is the next? Uh, it sounds exactly like time. Like, what time is it? It's time. Time. A uh, widely used as a uh, vegetable such as egg, eggplant, mm-hmm. and zucchini, and rhizomes of all types. Okay. Good. So uh, we get to learn about lots of different spices now. Uh, Ling, uh, uh, even though Greece is very far away, I'm sure I know that in Vietnamese cooking you use a lot of the same same herbs, right? So uh, mm, yes. You know? Do you? Okay, first let's see what olives are. Do you know olives? What that is? What olives look like? Mm, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so but olives. you know, um, Vietnamese often, um, Vietnamese people often. But now this word like olive, olive. Oh yeah, we just say olive. So yes. that I don't know. If you, I don't think you, you use that. But these these things, garlic, oregano, basil, mint, thyme. I think you use a lot of these things in your cooking. Let's let me show you. Let me show you these herbs. Let's show you what it looks like, and you'll see what I mean. Right. This is basil. So you've probably. I think you use this in. Vietnamese cooking and maybe uh, maybe mint probably what does it look like mint so stuff like that so it's uh, Greek food and Vietnamese food are very different but they use some of the same herbs those are herbs those little plants you use for flavor very good okay any other questions about that uh, that part? Let's uh, let's move on. Uh, Rafael, would you read the, the the next part? With twenty percent of Greece made up of Iceland of Iceland islands, and no part of Greek mainland more than ninety miles from the sea, fish and seafood. Are a popular, a popular and common part of the Greek diet. Lamb and goat, goat, are the traditional meat of holidays and festivals. And poultry, beef, and pork here are also in plentiful, plentiful supply. Buying yards. Buying jars cover much of Greece's of Greece's hilly terrain, and the country has become known for its array of fine wines and spirits. Most notably, also, an anise flowered liqueur, that is the national spirit. Good. Okay. Thank you, Rafael. Uh, questions on this part here, talking more about the ingredients, the meats, drinks that they have. So now we learned about spices, we learned about herbs, we learned about meats, and we learned about uh, drinks. What is the meaning of God? I don't, I don't know. God. Oh. That's the best thing for me to do is to show you a picture. You'll know immediately what I'm talking about. <laughs> Goat. <laughs> Goat. Goat. Uh, gold. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember. Thank you. Yeah, gold. <laughs> yep. gold. Like they like eat goat on holiday. Special mm. Hello, Ken. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Excellent. Welcome to our food class. <laughs> okay. I was just telling these folks for breakfast. I ate leftover uh, ramen. Uh, I went to a really nice, oh, nice yeah. Last night, oh, the army. <laughs> it was a uh, wasabi ramen. It had like a wasabi. Wasabi ramen. Wow, it's rare here. Yeah, the broth was a, yeah. The broth had a had a, a hint of wasabi flavor. And it was it was Ooh. very. I nice. want to eat that. Wow. Oh, it was, and they make <laughs> they make their homemade ramen noodles in the house. They make the noodles 
fresh every day. Wow. So really good ramen. Mm, yes, yes. The texture is different from instant noodle, instant ramen, and kind of homemade, handmade ramen. Oh, very different yeah. texture. It's, yes. uh, it's, it's springy. The, the, I don't know. I can't explain it, but like it's like it has some mm. more of a firm. I don't know. I can't explain mm -hmm. it, but it's delicious. It's, uh, so that would be exciting. It's one of my favorite things. So we are learning about Greek food now, and uh, we just learned about the different ingredients. Now let's talk about culinary influences. Um, so Greek has influenced and been influenced by other cultures. Um, so this is a little walk through time, a walk through history, and how Greek food became what it is today. Uh, Ken, will you read uh, this little chronology here? Okay. Uh, why Greek cooking has influenced and uh, been influenced by other cu cultures, as have the cuisines of most countries of all of 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 all of those countries, Greece uh, must be foremost in the ranks of having a fusion cuisine, which is easily tracked by back to 350 uh, BC. Good. Let's, In, let's stop there for a second. I okay. just want to ask that question for everyone. Does everyone understand what they mean by fusion cuisine? This is important yeah. because this is exactly what this is about. What does that mean? Mix. Mixed. Yeah, it's a mixture of different cuisines. So Greek is not just Greek food. It's been influenced by many different cultures. So fusion mm -hmm. is combining different foods into a new food. Mm -hmm. I, I know Spanish food does that. I know Vietnamese food does that. I know just Japanese food probably doesn't mm -hmm. influence yes. other cultures. So, uh, good. Let's continue. So, uh, keep going, Ken. Okay. In C 350 BC, when uh, Alexander the Great extended the Greek empire's reach from Europe to India, certain northern and eastern influences were observed into the Greek cuisine. In 146 BC, Greece fell to the Romans, which result, resulted in a blending of Roman influence into Greek cooking. In 330 AD, Emperor uh, Constantine moved to the capital of the Roman Empire of Constantinople, founding the Byzantine Empire, which in turn uh, fell to the Turk, Turks in uh, 1453 and remained part of the Ottoman Empire for nearly 400 years. During that time, this is had to be known by Turkish names, uh, names that remain today for many Greek classics. Good. Okay. So, um, so what is C dot? Yeah, that that part. Yeah. Um, so these are exact dates exact dates. Now when okay. they don't know the exact dates then they mm -hmm. say they use a Latin word. We mm -hmm. use Latin all the time in English of course. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, circa. Uh, circa. circa. Okay. Means, uh, it basically means around three uh, around 350 BC. Mm -hmm. Around 350 BC. We don't so know it should be a red C350 BC. I would read it uh, uh, in uh, circa 350 BC. Okay. Circa. Okay. Circa. Yeah, that's a good. I was gonna yeah, explain that. It's a, another Latin term. It just means around 350, somewhere around 350, maybe 351, maybe 349. We don't know perfectly. Good. So lots of influences from the Romans, from the uh, from India, from Europe, from the Turks. So and they all have good food too. I guess I don't know what they ate back then. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Ling, will you read the next, please? What is... <coughs> what is... Uh, what is success, successive invasion and settlement can culinary, can culinary influence from the Romans um, Venetia. Vene Venetians. Venetians. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't know. It's hard because they're all uh, they're all names. Balkans, Turks. Balkan. Turk. Mhm. Slave. Slave. Slav. Mhm. And even the English and many Greek foods have names which origins in those countries. Most noted, uh, notably the. Ottoman Empire. This is with names like um, Bella Bella from <laughs> the Turkish. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Continue. Yeah. Uh, um, Here. Bella, Bella Bella. I'll read this part uh, because there's a lot of different languages. Um, dishes with names like tzatziki from the Turkish tzatzik, uh, hummus from the Arabic word for chickpea, and dolmades from the Turkish dolma. Okay. That can be found in kitchens from Amer Armenia to Egypt, have also found a home in Greek cooking and have been adapted over hundreds of years to local tastes and traditions. Good. Uh, read the, this uh, paragraph too. Can you read the next paragraph, Lynn? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and during those times, the cl uh, the classic elements of Greek cuisine travel across borders as well, adopted and adapted in Europe, North Amer North Africa, the Middle East, and with Alexander the Great, Father East. Good. Uh, yes. Good, because yeah, Alexander the Great went all the way to like India. So all these different influences. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, good. Any questions about this part? Some other. What is the difference between father and father? Father is. Oh, father, farther and further. Mm, yes. Uh, uh, that's a good question. There is a rule for that. Let's uh, let's, let's take a look at that. There's going to be all sorts of uh, websites on farther. There's many different. I want to find a simple explanation, but there is a rule. Uh, so. Uh, so use farther for physical distance, like farther east, like India is farther east than uh, than Turkey, right? And, and you use further for uh, figurative. Uh, mm. So remember, because farther has the word far in it. Okay. So uh, yes. Uh, so. So furthermore, if we go further into the story, we can talk about this. But if I go farther, uh, if I can go farther on my bicycle, I can go far away. So that's a good quick way to remember it. So in this case, we're talking about traveling. We're talking about far. So we want to say farther. But anything else that we use far, uh, we use about distance, any other kind of distance, then we say further. Um, okay, thank you. Like, like, I don't, uh, if, if I asked you to read further, <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't say farther. I would say further. Like continue reading. I'd say read further because it's not traveling. Mm -hmm. Good question. That's a very good question about grammar because there is a difference. Uh, by the way, I'll read this note about hummus, uh, which is a Middle Eastern dish with an association to Greek food only because it appeared on the menu in many Greek restaurants around the world. So it's mostly just it's a favorite. Uh, a lot of times they mix up Greek and Middle Eastern food because they're similar. Uh, hummus is not Greek, mm -hmm. but you can find it in most Greek restaurants in America and other places because it's delicious. OK. Um, let's see. I have some interesting uh, trivia here. 
first good cookbook, all sorts of stuff. Um, let's read uh, this last paragraph. This is a nice little last paragraph. Uh, Rafa. <coughs> Greek food is simple and elegant, with flavors subtle to robust, with flavor subtle to robust, textures smooth to crunchy, fresh and timeless, nutritious and healthy. Preparing and enjoying Greek food anywhere in the world is an adventurous journey into the cradle of civilization and the land of the gods of Olympus. Discovering, tasting, experiencing Greek food. Truly, one of the joys we can all share. Good. Yeah, that's a nice little uh, ending ending paragraph. Uh, Lynn, you had a question about a crunchy? Mm, yes. Yes. So, can anyone, uh, who can tell her what crunchy means? Or do, do I have to make the sound? Crunchy, probably like a potato chips. Okay, yeah, if you eat a potato chip, if you yeah. eat an apple, it goes oh. crunchy. So potato chips, uh, apples, uh, maybe a little, some, some fresh lettuce. Has a, it's very crunchy. It's a texture. So soft is like yogurt is soft. It doesn't make any noise. But you eat an apple, as a crunch. You can crunch into an apple. Uh, it can be a verb or an adjective, or it's uh, it has a crunchy sound. So crunchy, one of the many uh, different uh, textures. Uh, one of the things about food that's fun is the different textures, the different flavors, the different colors, the different smells. So that's all the things that make food enjoyable. Uh, uh, I can show you some pictures of Greek food. I I'm sure some of us have had it before. Mm -hmm. uh, there's all sorts of different kinds of dishes. Uh, one of the most famous things, I don't know how famous this is in Greece, but it might be, they have a different name for it, but in the United States we love to eat these sandwiches with uh, different meats and a pita, pita bread, it's a flat bread, and we call them uh, gyro in the United States. I don't know how popular they are in Greece, but uh, in Greek American food, we love the gyro. It's a mm. delicious, flavorful sandwich with spiced lamb. So this is, you know, this is Greek style, like fish, I guess, with some. Is that on top? That's right. Uh, ah, wait a minute. There's stuff here. Spanakopita. This is. Uh, Looks like this is a phyllo dough. It's very flaky. See all the layers? It's very soft and flaky. And then there's probably spinach and cheese. That's common. It seems like a pie. Yeah, it is. Kind of, it's like mm -hmm. a. Yeah. And of course, olives are very important to Greek food. Olive. Olives and olive oil, both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Baklava, famous Greek d dessert, very sweet. Another, more of that phyllo dough, that, that very thin and flaky dough. And inside it has all this honey and, like, I think nuts or something. It's really sweet. Mm. Very sweet. So, all sorts of yummy things. Uh, okay. Oh, this is another... I think it's called pastic. What? Pastichio, I think. I don't know. Pastichio? I, I, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, my goodness. It's like lasagna. Yeah, it does look like lasagna. Okay. It's like, yeah, you're right. It's like baked with pasta and meat and all sorts of things. That looks very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can eat very much of that. Yeah, so I don't know that much about some of that. I've never been to Greece. Uh... But anyway, Greek food in the United States is popular. I don't know how similar. Musica is a popular dish. We don't have time to read this, but I just want to show you some. Uh, Tiropites or tiropatis, which is cheese 
cheese-filled triangle. Baklava, I was telling you about that. It has, yes, cinnamon, honey, and nut. Ooh, this is boiled leafy greens. Chicken soup, avgolomono. Oh, this is delicious. It's uh, chicken, mm. rice, and egg, and lemon. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. There's this uh, tzatziki, which comes from the Turkish language. It's a creamy, it's cold cucumber yogurt dip. And you, you can mm. put it on all sorts of different foods. It's wonderful. And we put it on that gyro sandwich, the Greek, the, uh, we put it on that uh, lamb sandwich. Yeah, there's that pastizio. I think, I think that's the one that looks like lasagna. What is it? Mm -hmm. Pasta and creamy bechamel, bechamel sauce. I don't know. Uh, wow. Wow. That looks heavy. I've never had that. Uh, some, another soup. A spanakopita is popular. In the United States, it's, uh, it's like spinach and cheese. Okay. So now we had a little uh, overview of Greek food. So who can remember what are some of the ing uh, typical ingredients in uh, Greek food? You said olives and oregano. Yes, olives and olive oil. That's an also important. Oregano. Uh, not the oregano, olive oil. <laughs> well, actually, oregano is also important. Uh, they mm. use oregano too. That's also they mention oregano as some of the. They use, they, talk, they use a lot of herbs. Herbs. They like to have lots of herbs. Uh, what are some other herbs? They use? Garlic. They also mention garlic and basil. Or also olive oil, oh, yeah, olive olives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, olives are important. Got like basil, mm -hmm. thyme, different things. These different herbs and spices to make it more flavorful. Mm -hmm. Seafood, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, many fishes, mm -hmm. many fish. Yeah, fish. Uh, fish is very important. It's uh, if you look at oh, if you look at a map of Greece, it's like just tons of islands. Many, many, many islands. If you ever look at a map of Greece, uh, which actually, since I like maps so much, we should, we should maybe check that, take a look. Uh, so I'm going to do that here. And you'll see if you can always kind of guess what the food might be like from a place by looking at a map. Ah, I hate that. I do that. So. Yeah, there's Greece. All of this is Greece here. See all the islands? It's all around by the surrounded by sea. Mm. And there's Turkey right here, so you can see how it must be influenced by Turkish food. And it, Italy is right here. So. Mm -hmm. so it's all islands. Lots of fish. Uh, and um, so how does Greek cuisine how do greek dishes how do they how does it compare to your cuisine to your food like is it similar are there similarities are there differences to the kind of food that you eat mm, uh, it's very different from traditional food here but uh, if i saw the cake kind of the sweet it's somewhat similar to moon cake. Oh. Yeah, dried fruits and nuts inside a kind of cake, mm. cake, I think. Mm. Yeah. Moon cake. Is that like the moon cake in China? Is that the same? I think original moon cake is China. Is in China. Yeah. Chinese. Yeah, I've had Chinese, yeah. Chinese moon cake. Before. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. So maybe yeah. So the. So like the dinners may not be similar at all, but maybe maybe some of the desserts are similar. Hmm, that's right. Maybe same origin, I guess. Maybe I don't know because mm. both of you, I don't know. Like in be between Japan and Greece is India, and <laughs> Indians. If you've ever had Indian sweets? They're very very sweet, uh, very sweet. And so maybe maybe baklava has some kind of 
Indian origin because Alexander the Great went to India thousands of years ago. Maybe some, maybe the, somehow the Japanese and the Indians had some kind of contact. Yeah, I, I it is said. Uh, some research linguists linguists say uh, Japanese one of the origin of Japanese language is southern India, South India. What? Like Tamil? Or like really? Ah, uh, Tamil. Oh yeah, Tamil. Yes, Tamil language it's region. Not, yeah. It's, oh. But it's not clear like in English. Japanese origin language origin is still doesn't have an academic consensus. But uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, there's yeah. no there's no consensus as to the family or origin. Yes. That, it's just flurrying just a little bit. Oh, sorry. I it is that. said Ural Altai group, <laughs> but really? uh, yeah, yeah, it's the same uh, same as Turkey Turkish language. Oh yeah. Well, Turkish is Turkic. Isn't it? Isn't it uh, really? I, I misunderstood that. Kind yeah. of, yeah. Okay. They say, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the Altaic. Mm -hmm. Altaic is what they're saying. Maybe they say maybe. Oh, no, you're right. I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, so Turkic is a part of Altaic. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's where I, I was confused. Altaic is the, is, is the whole family, whereas Turkic is a very big. Weird. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Anyway, we're not we're talking about language and not about food. Uh, so I just wanted to tell everyone that it's I mean, down here in Atlanta, in the south, where it doesn't snow much, but there's little flurries, small snow, a uh, little bit of snow uh, in the air. Uh, if you probably you might have heard in the news that in the United States right now, today is one of the coldest days, and the whole country is frozen, uh, really cold, dangerously cold in the United States. Um, it's not too bad in Atlanta, uh, but tonight it's supposed to get down to, uh, what's the, let's see. Uh, um, it's tonight it's supposed to get to like negative 17 degrees in Atlanta, oh. which is not normal. That's I've never seen it get that cold. Uh, also... Are there a uh, hurricane in the in, in the part of New York in the area of New York? There is a hurricane there. Really, I've heard about it. Yes, I, I, in the Washington area, I think. Yeah. Yesterday, I saw on the news. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, my Connecticut friend says blizzard in kind of winter hurricane came mm. to Connecticut. Yeah, at least. Oh, okay. yeah. Blizzard. oh, Blizzard. Is that what you meant? Blizzard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very cold and there's a storm, a winter storm. Mm -hmm. Oh, very cold. Some places might get down to negative 50 degrees. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like Alaska. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Well, that's the thing. It's a polar, polar thing. Okay. Thanks, everyone. We're out of time. I have... Um, I have four more classes today, and uh, my next class is in one hour. It's about uh, music copyright, and uh, there's a, a social network in Russia that has been that some of the United States music labels are going to try to take to court and try to sue because mm -hmm. this, this this website is giving away free music. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a pop culture class. We're going to talk about Russia's Facebook. It's a website. Uh, and then what else I have? Uh, we have a, a travel class. We're going to travel to Nigeria. And then we'll travel to Transylvania. And then we'll have an art class about Japanese woodblock printing. We're going to make our own mm. Japanese woodblock printing. It's too arty for me. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a beginner class anyway. So you don't have to worry. Okay. Okay, guys. Thanks, everyone. Nice to see you again. And good job today. Okay. Thank you very much. Keep on speaking. Thank, you. Thank you very much. You're doing very good. Bye. Um, we'll see you next Bye. time. Bye. Good night. <coughs> see you. Bye.